Well, good morning, friends. I am Pastor Mark McElraith, and I am so glad you could be with here at Lake Grove Presbyterian Church, where we are partnering with Christ, who transforms the world one life at a time. If you're watching with us live this morning, I encourage you to, to use the chat feature just below this screen here. You can scroll down and find it. Sign into that chat feature and let us know where you're live streaming from. We would love to hear from you there and engage with you in that way. So I encourage you to do that. You know, friends, as we draw near the elections, we continue to pray for our country, recognizing that this is a time of anxiety and deep division. Uh, so be on the lookout on our social media outlets for a time of praying together for our country and, and for the elections. We'll be praying on October 26th and November 2nd together as a church. I'd love for you to join us. So be on the lookout for more information for that. Also, in these times of uncertainty, we do put our ultimate trust in God. And so we want to invite you to join us for Caring Conversations. It's a time for reflecting on our experiences in these complicated seasons together. And we will acknowledge the difficulty of these times and bring comfort and care through Scripture and prayer. So uh, Pastor, uh, Pastor Lillian Pack and Pastor Susan Graham will be leading that time for Caring Conversations. You can find out more information on the CARE page of our website, so be sure to take advantage of that. Well, next Sunday, we will have a drive through pledge dedication. As you know, we're in the time of stewardship right now, and uh, next Sunday will be our Pledge Sunday. Now, usually on Pledge Sundays, we bring our dedications forward in worship. But since we're unable to gather this year, uh, obviously because of the pandemic, we will have a drive through Pledge dedication next Sunday after the services at uh, 1230 to 1.30. Um, so that'll be, again, after our worship services next Sunday, 12.30 to 1.30, a drive through pledge dedication. You will uh, receive a commitment card in the mail, just like this. You'll receive it in the mail this week, and we encourage you to uh, prayerfully uh, think about that and, and fill that out, and you can bring it with you in the drive through time. Of course, if you're un unable to drive through uh, on Sunday to meet us here, uh, you can certainly put it in the enclosed envelope and mail it back as well. But it'll be a fun time to see you. Uh, I'll be there along with our pastors and our staff, and we all want to see you. So that's next Sunday, 1230 to 1.30, uh, pledge dedication uh, drive through So I'll see you there. And speaking of drive throughs at the church, I can't wait for you to hear about something exciting coming up uh, with our Harvest Festival. So let's hear from Leslie and Mark Hanscom about that right now. I'm tired of this job. My arms are tired. Mm -hmm. We're not getting any effect on these crows. They're not paying any attention to us whatsoever. We need to find another job. What other jobs are there for scarecrows? Hey, I heard there was a job for scarecrows at Lake Grove Presbyterian Church in the parking lot. Yeah, tell me more about that. Well, there's this harvest festival where people are gonna be driving through the parking lot and there's gonna be a juggling unicyclist and pumpkins and candy and people in costumes and pumpkins, lots and lots of pumpkins. Okay. And they, they need scarecrows. Apparently they do need scarecrows. All right, well, when is it? It is Wednesday, October 28th from four to six. Okay, all right, let's, let's go and apply for that job. Then. Okay, ready? I don't think we're getting anywhere. <laughs> Isn't that just fantastically hilarious? I hope to see you this Wednesday at the Harvest Festival. Be sure to join us. And 
maybe even meet those scarecrows live. So uh, isn't that wonderful? Well, as always, we do want to hear from you. We want to hear how you're doing and how you're managing uh, through this season. So be sure to email us at our CARE email line. It's care at lakegrovepress.org or leave a message on the pastor's voicemail box and you can see the number there on your screen. Let us know how you're doing. We want to we wanna celebrate with you or care for you however we can. And we want to walk alongside you through this season. So be sure to do that. Well, with that, Paul Stewart and the Brunson family are leading us in our call to worship this morning. So let's enter into worship with our call to worship with them. Good morning, Lake Grove Presbyterian Church. We are the Brunson and Stewart family. Please join us for the call to worship. We love you, Lord, our strength. The, the Lord, Lord is our rock and our, and our fortress. fortress. We love you, Lord, our deliverer. The, the Lord, Lord is our rock in whom we take refuge. We love you, Lord, our protector. The, the Lord, Lord is our shield and our stronghold. We love you, Lord, our savior. The, the Lord, Lord is worthy to be praised. Let's praise the Lord, our God. Amen. 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 Friends, this uh, next segment of our worship service is the Our Story segment, the segment where we share uh, our stories of Jesus Christ with each other. And so today, one of our newest members, Amy Beth Jacobson, is willing to share her story of meeting Jesus and growing in him. So um, as we hear from her, be thinking yourself, about how Christ might be at work in your life. So let's hear from Amy Beth and her story with Jesus right now. Hi, um, my name is Amy Beth Jacobson, and this is my story. 
Um, so I've always known of God and of Jesus, and but I never really knew them. My grandma took me to church when I was little, uh, but as an adult, I just, I guess I felt like I wasn't, like if I wasn't already awesome and good and doing super awesome things that I can't go to church, uh, which now I know is very ironic, but that's how I felt. And, um, you know, when I was about 35 or so, uh, I wanted to change that. And I started endeavoring to let God into my life. And how that looked for me is I started um, sitting every morning with him and um, praying and trying to listen for what he had for me. And one Christmas Eve, my brother's family, we were all at a shindig, and they were leaving, and I, I said, where are you guys going? And um, my sister-in-law said, we're going to our Christmas Eve late night service. And out of my mouth said, came, can I come with you? And of course they said, sure. And so I went to this service not knowing what it was gonna look like or anything. And uh, cause like I said, I haven't been to church as an adult. And I was sitting there and I just remember having this overwhelming feeling of joy enter my body. So I literally felt like Jesus was holding me and like holding my heart between his hands and I just started crying, and that's where it started for me, and um, my love for Jesus, that is. And so it's a long story how it got to Lake Road Presbyterian, but you know, my first service there, uh, the pastor, there was a um, baptism for a little boy and a little girl, and when the baptism was done, he walked them between us down the aisle, and I'm not sure exactly what he said, but it was something along the lines is, look at all these people. They're all walking this walk for you. They're all your family, and I started crying, and I was like, oh, I found my church home, and uh, you know, not coincidental that within a, a couple months of that uh the sermon was about you know the pastor said what's on your heart what does god want you to do that you have been afraid to do and it came to me be baptized i guess i thought someone was going to say no she can't get baptized get her out of there and so instead i walked through the fear and i um you know went to the new member seminar and had a little chat with Robin that was amazing and she baptized me Palm Sunday a couple years ago and uh, you know life is just good I just and that's where I'm at right now it's just um, you know just trying to listen for uh, God's will for me and if ever I'm feeling poopy or even feeling awesome I just look up and I always just see Jesus face and I feel his hands on my face, and I just know that I am loved. And that's, that's all I got. Thanks. Thank you, Amy Beth, for sharing your story about how Jesus transformed your life. Now let's pray together. O Sovereign Lord, we glorify you for the ways you hold our hearts in between your hands. We thank you for the way your Holy Spirit has pierced our hearts and how you remind us each day just how much you love us. We praise and honor you. And now as we enter this time of worship, we confess we so easily forget your love. We forget how your suffering, death and resurrection impacts our daily lives and we forget your promise to never leave us nor forsake us. Forgive us, O Lord. Forgive us for surrendering our weaknesses, for being easily angered, for being implicit in injustice. Forgive us for relying on our own understanding rather than seeking the path you lay before us. Thank you, O God, for receiving our confession. We come to the cross with empty hands, knowing we have nothing to bring, but you welcome us with open arms, offering forgiveness and new life. 
we receive your forgiveness and ask that you give us ears to hear your word, that it might be a light onto our path. Speak now through your servant, Pastor Mark. In your holy name we pray, amen. Amen. Well, friends, you, many of you know <clears throat> we are in a sermon series called Jesus First, How God Rescues Us. As we're going through uh, New Testament stories with Jesus, and we see how uh, placing Jesus first in our lives is really God's way of rescuing us. And what a great word for us in a season such as we are in. This is also a stewardship season as well, and um, as many of you know, a stewardship is not a, a fundraising season. No, it's, stewardship is a season for exploring how we respond to God's grace in our lives. Well, <clears throat> today we see that very truth in our scripture. Now, Talking about money in church is, frankly, awkward. But today, it is absolutely unavoidable. Our daily 365 Bible reading lands directly on Mark 12 today. And so we are not going to shy away from that text. We're not going to shy away from Scripture. So with that Let's put on our seatbelts and listen to God's word for us today. This is Mark chapter 12, verses 41 through 44. Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> well, friends, believe it or not, this text will help our perspective as election day draws near. You'll see that in just a minute. But to enter into the text right now, I want to tell you a little bit about the treasury that was mentioned here. The treasury described here, according to the Mishnah, was a series of 13 trumpet-shaped receptacles. Uh, these receptacles uh, took in coins, the coinage. Now, five times in these four verses, our text says that they put their money in. But the Greek word really means throw in, toss in. So imagine the scene. The wealthy are streaming by, throwing in, <clears throat> maybe even pouring in all their heavy coinage into the treasury. It would sound like a slot machine with coins pouring out <clears throat> into the receptacle. Imagine that loud sound, the noise. Imagine the attention. Well, that's why no one noticed a small, poor widow in tattered clothes quietly slipping through into the treasury, throwing in two half pennies. Well, such a tiny dink compared with the rushing coinage of the wealthy. Well, I imagine people kindly turn away, avoiding embarrassing this poor woman. But then there is Jesus. Jesus dares to point her out. She threw in everything she had, he says. 
I mean, did she? How foolish. Her needs certainly take precedence over her piety. And with all that, that, that cash pouring in, the temple does not need her half pennies. She seems foolish to throw everything in. Now we are more calculating. We have expenses. Why should I give when I have so many needs? Well, the wealthy here are fantastically generous. Simply wonderful, actually. Their graciousness enables ministry and glorifies God. Now, maybe you've seen them, but studies have shown that giving money away actually brings happiness to the givers, brings great pleasure. So it's a win-win. It, uh, it reminds me of a, a well-appointed woman who came across a panhandler asking for money. And she dug deep into her purse and threw a dollar bill in the cup. And as she did, she said, I will give you a dollar, not because you deserve it, but because it gives me pleasure. And the man replied, well, thank you, ma'am. And while you're at it, why not make it a 10 and thoroughly enjoy yourself? Well, doesn't that woman remind you of the wealthy in our text? As Jesus said, they gave out of their surplus. They gave out of their abundance. And many think giving is optional when we have extra like, like that well-appointed woman did. And giving out of your surplus is a wonderful way of thanking God for his goodness. But, but that isn't tithing. You likely already know that the word tithe means a tenth. Biblical law required giving a tenth of your livelihood to those ministering in the temple. Now the generously wealthy people here in our text were calculating their giving as directed by Scripture. Ten percent of their wealth is a gift to God. That is the tithe. And you know what that means? That means you get to keep 90% to spend on whatever you want. That's tithing. But what if keeping 90% isn't enough? I mean, we need to calculate it out. We... We need to calculate it out. We want to ask, why give when we have so many needs ourselves? I mean, like that widow. That that widow was not calculating. Rather than calculating everything out, she threw everything in. Now, even if she threw in one of her half pennies that would be 50%, well over a tithe. She had every right to hang on to what she had. She gave not out of her abundance, she gave out of her poverty. In verse 44, Jesus says that she gave all she had to live on. Now, there are several words in Greek for the word live. As a matter of fact, there are three words in Greek. They are zoe, suke, and bios. Now zoe is the word for live or life. Zoe means um, like really living. This is the life. It's it's, It's an energetic kind of living. That's zoe. Suke is the internal life, the emotional life, what goes on inside emotionally, internally. 
Psuche is the word that we actually get for our word psychology from. Psuche, the in interior life. Now, neither of those words, neither zoe or psuche, is the word that Jesus uses here in our text. Rather, Jesus uses the third word for life in Greek. And that word is bios. As you guess, that's where we get our word biology from. Bios, meaning living things, living creatures, bios. That's what Jesus uses in our text. You see, Jesus isn't saying that the widow gave up her zoe, fun-loving life. Jesus isn't saying this widow gave up her psuche, emotional life. Jesus says she gave up her bios life. She gave up her eating and breathing and existing. Giving up bios means death without God's provision. Her giving took food out of her mouth. That is sacrificial giving. Sacrificial giving. So, why didn't she just tithe? Tithing is so much easier. Why didn't she just do that? <clears throat> when I was in kindergarten... I saw for the very first time one of my good friends riding a bike. I thought that was for the big kids. I mean, it was amazing. It was like my friend had a superpower. Now, I had a bike with training wheels. I saw my friend, however, flying on his bicycle without training wheels, and I was determined to get rid of mine. <clears throat> Watching my dad take off those training wheels was a milestone in my life. I was terrified and determined. Could I do it without training wheels? I sat on my now training wheel free bike with adrenaline rushing through my 44-pound kindergarten body with clenched jaw, sweaty palms, and eyes narrowed to slits. Then my dad shoved the bike forward, and I pedaled like mad and fell. But after a few tries, I was flying. What freedom and joy and newfound liberty. My life was never the same. That is tithing. You see, tithing is the training wheels for those learning how to give. Tithing is the training wheels until we can become fully generous with freedom and joy and newfound liberty. Calculating 10% is where we start. Where we end is living a fully generous life, joyfully giving all we are to Christ. The widow didn't need those training wheels. She was fully living by fully giving. Rather than calculating it all out, she threw it all in. Why? We could keep our training wheels. We could keep 90% for ourselves. Why give our bios life is unreasonable, un uncalculated, foolish. We have calculated expenses. Why give when we have so many needs? Well, the answer is embedded in our story. <clears throat> Jesus said the widow gave so much more. Why? Well, because Jesus wasn't weighing her coinage 
He was weighing her heart. And isn't it fascinating, remarkable, really, that after 2,000 years, we are still talking about this nameless widow. She's famous. Famous for sacrificial giving. We still talk and think and wonder about her because deep down, deep down inside, we know her sacrifice reflects Christ's. She reflects the God who gave up everything for us. She reflects the God who left his throne in heaven to become poor for us. She reflects the God who is uncalculating with his grace for us. She reflects the God who gave up his bios life on the cross to give us life to the fullest. How could God be so foolish like that widow? Because God is uncalculatingly foolish for you. And so we can trust God with everything. We can trust Him with our lives. We can trust Him with our country. We can trust Him with these elections. We can trust God because He cares about us more than we can understand. And so, as we head to the polls, let Christ guide your vote. And simply trust God. Trust God who is bigger than these elections. Even if they don't make sense, we can still trust God. Not only with the elections, but with our fears, with our concerns, with our money, with our health, with our lives. So if you only hear one thing today, hear this. Because God has given everything, even his life for us, we give everything, even our lives, back to him. How can we not throw it all in? <clears throat> now, if you're like me, you have struggled with this. You have struggled with giving everything over due to fear or due to lack of trusting God. And so, maybe just... Start with a tithe. But then, what if we could be fully giving like that widow, trusting God with everything? Financial fears, gone. Fear of loss, gone. Fear of death, gone. Fear of failure, gone. Fear itself, gone. Just imagine a trusting life of such joy and, and freedom and peace. There is no room for fear. I want to trust God like that. I want to trust God like that widow. How about you? Trusting God like that widow, rather than calculating it all out, she threw it all in. Calculating the tithe is the beginning, and that's great. But if you're not fully giving, you're not fully living. So rather than calculating it all out, can we just throw it all in? Thirty-six year old Johann Dober and twenty-six year old David Nitschmann knew what throwing it all in meant. They left their church in Copenhagen for the Danish West Indies. The year was uh, 1732. They were among the first Protestant missionaries in history to, give, to, to, to work among the slaves. They had such fearless trust in God that they gave up their bios life for God's purposes. They threw it all in. For Christ's leading. So Dober and Hitchman went. 
And as they went, they would send back letters to their church, their congregation, who constantly lifted them up in prayer. And that congregation would read these letters, which, which often gave chilling reports of sickness and opposition. Although those two missionaries continued to trust Christ with joyful abandon. Dober and Hitchman were so committing to putting Jesus first in their lives by giving all they had and all they were to God that, and this is hard to believe, they did everything they could to sell themselves into slavery just so they could reach the slaves they believed Jesus Christ was calling them to reach. They were willing to sell themselves into slavery, but they were prevented from doing so at every turn, and so instead they took manual jobs on plantations working alongside the slaves. Talk about putting Jesus first in their lives. And that's when God's uncalculating grace came alive in those slaves that they worked with, bringing hope and joy to them. Could I do that? Would I do that? Can we put Jesus first in our lives like that? We calculate the tithe, which is fantastic. But the widow didn't calculate it all out because she threw it all in. Dober and Hitchman didn't calculate it all out because they threw it all in. What about us? Because God has given everything, even his life for us, we give everything, even our lives, back to him. With overflowing hearts of gratitude, we don't calculate it all out because we throw it all in. God doesn't want your money. God wants all of you. Tithing is the training wheels. Tithing is the first step. Tithing is the beginning to giving all we have and all we are over to God. That is putting Jesus first. That is fully living. And that is our scripture text for today. What a challenge. It certainly challenges me. So as we anticipate Pledge Dedication Sunday next week, prayerfully ask yourself, how seriously do I take this text? How seriously do I take this poor widow? How seriously do I take putting Jesus first? You see, God has given his entire life for us. So what will we do with our lives? Will we calculate it all out? Or will we throw it all in? What will we do? Amen.
is only for my king. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee, filled with messages from Please pray with me. O oh God, we join in the hymn and ask that you would take our lives and let them be consecrated to you. We know that our lives are no longer our own. We give our hearts to you, knowing you gave us your son, Jesus Christ, as the ultimate sacrifice. And so we offer our lives to you. Lord, take it all. Take all of the worries and concerns we carry today. Gracious Lord, you know we are tired and exhausted. We feel the weight of the pandemic and the ripple effects it is having on our lives. We are feeling a deeper sense of loneliness, irritability, impatience, depression. We're seeing a return to substance abuse and feeling overwhelmed. God, have mercy on us. We pray for your tangible presence to fill our hearts so that in you and you alone, we can find comfort and strength. We pray boldly for healing, healing of our world and healing of our nation. We pray for economic relief. We pray against social injustices. We pray for those tirelessly trying to rebuild their lives after the wildfires tropical storms and earthquakes. We also pray for healing of fractured families and against the spirit of divisiveness. Instead, Lord, we beg and plead for your spirit of unity and reconciliation to reign. Oh God, during our 2021 stewardship campaign, we ask that you would ignite in us your vision, your vision to broaden our relational connections and missions discipleship, worship, hospitality, and care, and that you would cause us to continue to generously partner with our mission partners and with you. We think today of Agros International, and we ask that as they temporarily redirect their time and resources to help severe food insecurities in the rural communities because of COVID-19, we ask that you would give them insight on how best to administer their resources. We lift all of these items that were named and unnamed to you in confidence as we say the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, if again, if you are watching us live on our website, be sure to click to the options you will find to the right of this video window in order to engage with us after the postlude. 
And uh, be sure to check out our events page to engage with us in the week ahead because we want to be in relationship with you. But now, hear the benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all as we throw it all in, giving our entire lives over to Christ, both now and forevermore. And all God's people shouted, Amen. Oh, my God.